psychological point of view, you perhaps don't know this, but there are many different ways for a given amino acid, say for this uh, second position here, this is an amino acid called alanine. There are several different options of DNA code that will still give you an alanine. And part of the reason is, if you read off in groups of three, and there are four different DNA options in that group of three, then there are actually 64 different possible groupings of three. Okay? So just four to the third power. Okay? There are only 20 amino acids in all proteins in living organisms. So we have 64 possible sets. These things are called codons, these groups of three. We have 64 different possible codons or sets, yet we only have 20 amino acids to worry about. So the genetic code is said to be redundant. In layman's terms, there are different options that still give you the same amino acid. So if I want to code alanine, I could have GCC, GCA, GCG, or GCT. All of those will give me alanine. At leucine, for example, there are six different options, and so on. So the point that I'm making here is that not only do we have exact similarity or virtually identical similarity between the amino acid level, but there's also identity, high identity at the nucleic acid level, even though it doesn't need to be so in order to have the same amino acid sequence. There are many, many, many different possible combinations that will still give you these amino acids in sequence. Yet what we see when we look at humans and look at chimpanzees is we see the sequence at the DNA level that is the most consistent with common ancestry. Put another way, I could make this, the observed identity at the nucleic acid level is about 98%, just for this little snippet. Yet, I could make this sequence only be about, you know, 53% identical and still have the same amino acids in the same sequence. So we can constrain function, but the genetic code, because of its redundancy, there are different coding options available. That's now. Great. So that's what you have to keep. These ones you have to have there if you want these amino acids, but everything else is up for grabs. Okay. So how many different possible ways can you code this little snippet of insulin? <coughs> well, there's about 26 million different possible ways to code this little snippet of insulin. Yet the one that we see is the most consistent with common ancestry of those different options that are available. Okay. So it's the one that's most consistent with common descent. Okay, to stretch this a little bit further, remember I told you insulin has 110 amino acids, not just that little snippet, okay? We can continue to look at other organisms. So here's human sequence again. This is chimpanzee. Here's another one, this is a gorilla. Okay, so another, this gorilla is proposed to have, be more distant, still closely related to human, but less, less so than chimpanzee. And again, what we see overall across this in these different species is we see exactly what you would predict based on common descent. The DNA code is virtually identical between these different species, even though it doesn't need to be so at an amino acid functional level. For this snippet, there are about 18 quintillion <laughs> possible combinations, or 18 times 10 to the 18, yet the one we see is almost identical based on the, the DNA sequence. It would be very possible if one was thinking about this as an independent design sort of framework. There are design options available, 18 quintillion of them, yet what we observe in nature is the most consistent with common ancestry, based on this predictive framework of relatedness that we have established based on other criteria. Okay. Now, Insulin is but a tiny, tiny portion of the genome. The human genome has about 3 billion DNA letters in its code. The chimpanzee genome has a bit more, about 3.12 billion. Okay. Now, of that 3 billion in the one species and the, the 3.12 billion in the other species, 2.7 billion of those DNA base pairs line up with one another. 
exactly as you would expect them to line up. And the difference that we see in those nucleus, in those sequence, when they're lined up, they differ by only 1.23% across that 2.7 billion base pairs. Okay. So that's sort of the short answer. The, the issue is, is that what we see with human insulin is, and chimpanzee insulin, is not an isolated case. It's representative of the vast majority of the genome. If you look specifically at the parts of the genome that are used to make proteins, and it might be surprising to you from a biological perspective that most of our genome doesn't make proteins. It's only a, quite a small percentage. So if we look specifically, gene exons, that's just a technical term for the bits that make proteins, just like insulin, like we were just looking at. If we look at those sequences, they're even more similar to one another. They differ by only 0.6% across a sample size of about 18.5 million base pairs. Okay. So the point is, not only are we homologous, we have the same genes, essentially, they're almost identical one to another, and the redundancy issue says that even though there are multiple coding options available for those identical genes, we still see the code across the vast majority of the genome is exactly what you would predict based on common ancestry. All right, so that's homology with redundancy sort of thrown into the mix. Next, we're going to ask the question, okay, we seem to have essentially the same genes. Do we have those genes in the same order? Or are those genes in a different order? So you might say, okay, you're going to write a book. You need to use words. Okay, fine. I can take, you know, Hamlet, and I can take you know, the Oxford English Dictionary of the same period. And yeah, guess what? The gene, you know, the words are almost identical between the two of them. But no one would ever argue that Hamlet and the Oxford English Dictionary are variant manuscripts of this same original manuscript. The argument there would be, well, yeah, of course, but they need the same words. Now, I don't think that fully holds even with what we've looked at for the redundancy issue, but it's still a fair argument. If these two genomes are proposed to be variant versions of what was once the same genome, then we would expect to find not only the same genes, but they should still roughly be in the same order. So that's what we're going to look at now. Okay. My apologies, I am a fruit fly Drosophila <laughs> geneticist, so I'm going to take a slight detour into a less controversial organism. Okay? So I work on fruit flies, yes, the same ones that you swat in your kitchen and they're annoyed about. Okay. The reason why I turned